Hello there, my fellow Battle Brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of Space Marine Chapters lore. This time, it is part two from my coverage of the Marine's Errand. Last time, I introduced this chapter and talked mostly about their history and some famous campaign they were a part of. Today, we will delve deeper into the workings of the chapter and learn more about their organization, librarians, which have some rather unique abilities, and of course, their combat doctrine. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us continue, shall we? The Marine's Errant is a fleet-based crusading chapter, and although it follows the tenets of the Codex Astartes in its basic pattern of organization, in practice the chapter has modified its tenets to better suit the needs and patterns of its deployments. An example of this is that the chapter's company captains and high officers are also assigned flag command of a particular starship in the chapter's fleet, and are expected to act autonomously of a higher command authority for long periods if necessary. The chapter's veteran first company and 10th scout company are nominally based on their flagship battle barge with the majority of their number being dispersed as needed to individual commands, which can vary considerably in size and operational terms. To fulfill the mandate of aiding humanity at any time and in any place, the Marines errant attempt to maintain as broad a reach as possible. Their companies regularly operate on independent duty dispersed throughout the galaxy. To enable such dispersion, every company commander is functionally the commander of a strike vessel. These ships are most commonly strike cruisers, though the chapter has several light cruisers and one battle cruiser as part of its armada. So that these companies can function independently, each of these vessels maintains a separate armory of vehicles, in addition to its normal complement of space marines. Each of the chapter's vessels is supplemented by members of the 1st and 10th companies. This way, each has access to the expertise offered by the chapter's veteran battle brothers, as well as the opportunity to train initiates and use them on infiltration missions. A side effect of this approach is that newly recruited members often fail to grasp the full scope of their chapter until the next gathering. To overcome this, many initiates are transferred to another company before their training is completed. This way, some sense of connection between the different companies can be maintained. Due to historical losses of irreplaceable advanced equipment that have never been fully replenished, the Marines errant have learned to carefully shepherd their resources in terms of equipment, such as Terminator armor. The chapter's tech marines have become particularly adept not only in maintaining and repairing said equipment, but also in reclaiming and restoring weapons and gear they might come across in their crusades. This has led to some concern in the past over the marines' errant tendency to use non-codex approved weapons, and even the incorporation of xeno technology within their ranks, although such heretical accusations have never been proven. As a fleet-based chapter, the Marines errant are rarely gathered en masse, except at the commencement of a major crusade called by the chapter master. Most often, the forces of the chapter are dispersed to multiple task forces, deployed to various expeditions and war zones spread across the Imperium. It is not unheard of for individual task forces to be out of communication with the chapter for years, even decades at a time. Given these factors, each company and battle group has to manage its own affairs, and the recruiting of new initiates when and wherever opportunities arise. Since they have no single source of aspirants, the Marines errant recruit from many different worlds, returning their new brothers to the ranks of the 10th company to complete their formal training when practical. Replacing a company can be a very difficult process, In addition to reallocating and requisitioning extremely rare weapons, vehicles, and armor, the Marines errant must also obtain a new strike cruiser. 
the Adeptus Mechanicus can take centuries to provide some of this war gear, while other requisitions may never be fulfilled. All other companies are expected to increase their initiation rates at such a time, so that established space marines may be tithed to a new company. Strangely enough, on several occasions, once a company had been replaced, the original miraculously returned from an extended crusade. This has resulted in the Marines errand having more than 10 companies, and stood well over the Codex mandated strength of 1000 Marines. Because of this, it is virtually impossible to accurately gauge the chapter's total assets at any given time. Imagine, if you will, that the Imperium probably considers this a bad thing, while at the same time, a chapter like the Flesh Terrors sits alone in a corner with one third of its strength. Like their fellow Astartes chapters, the Marines errant also maintain a librarium of potent psychas, who are highly talented and trained to master the powers of the warp. Each chapter selects its own librarians in its own way, either from seed worlds, as it does with the bulk of its initiates, or from the ranks of gifted psychers brought to the Scholastica Psychana of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica. Many chapters train and test chosen psychers following the ancient ways laid out in the Codex Astartes. Librarians of the Marines Errant chapter are trained in this way, and with a few minor traditional variances, have been taught to live by the word of the Codex. Marines errant librarians also have a number of unique psychic abilities only used within this chapter. And they can include The Darkness Gate Summoning up the potent energies of the warp, the librarian can fold space between two points within the void, and bring them closer together for an instant, allowing space marines to pass through. The Darkness Gate has effects similar to a teleportarium, allowing objects from one point to be transferred to another in a rapid instance via the conduit of the warp. It only works for a small group of individuals, and only across an airless space like the Void, but it can be effective for staging hit-and-run attacks. The Librarian picks a point in space which he can observe, such as a distant starship. Provided there are no obstacles or atmosphere between the point he can see and the point where he is standing, a momentary gate through the warp will open, allowing him and his companions to step through. Perils of the warp can be particularly dangerous when using this power. Shadows in the Stars The librarian can look out into the inky black of the void and see things mere sensors and aspects cannot reading the ebb and flow of the darkness and the warp which lies beneath it. The Void Hammer Summoning up a brutal burst of psychic energy, the librarian smashes objects and batters structures with raw psychic power. Against individuals, this power can knock them down and break their bones, but against inanimate objects it can rend apart walls and buckle bulkheads. The librarian picks a point within range and line of sight as the impact point of the void hammer. Any individuals within 3 meters of this point will be hit by the concussive blast, unless they can successfully dodge and leap out of the way. Objects like walls, supports, doors will suffer impact damage. This can also be used to punch holes in objects if it does enough damage to destroy them or bring down entire buildings by destroying supports. This ability can also be used effectively against a vehicle. As a proud successor to the Ultramarines Legion, the Marines errant follow the dictates of the Codex Astartes as closely as they can. Their primary adaptations from its doctrines are all intended to grant them additional flexibility, in keeping with their duties as constant crusaders. With the exception of those changes, the chapter fervently espouses the core of Primarch Robut Gilliman's martial philosophy. The soul of this adherence is represented in the chapter's consistent use of combined arms. It maintains the necessary flexibility to address virtually any opponent. 
While Assault, Devastator and Scout Squads are used in keeping with the prescriptions of the Codex, their proportionate numbers are carefully preserved. To the extent that they are available, vehicle assets are used as the situations demand. Because such resources are not always readily available, Assault Squads are often used in place of lighter vehicles, while Devastator Squads fulfill the role which would normally be reserved for Space Marine tanks. The Marines Errant do not have a favored opponent. They have engaged in countless battles against Xenos, Heretics, and even the Minions of Chaos. No matter what type of foe they might oppose, the chapter's Space Marines adhere to the Codex's teachings as they dispassionately eliminate any who would threaten the Imperium. This doctrine offers the advantage that the Marines Errant are less expectant of a particular enemy strategy or predisposed to use a specific and potentially predictable strategy of their own. Due to the losses that the Marines Errant have sustained, they are often conservative in how they use their equipment and war gear. Heavy tanks, dreadnoughts, and the rarest war gear items are only used in the most extreme circumstances. The chapter has sustained significant losses through the course of its many crusades, and can ill afford to sustain new ones. It is clear that the Marines Errant go to extreme measures to repair any equipment that suffers damage in the field, due to the expertise of their own tech marines. A few fortunate discoveries from their countless crusades have also enabled the chapter to reclaim some war gear that would otherwise be irreplaceable. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Marines Errant for today. Are these fellows among your favorite chapters? Why do you like them? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video entertaining or informative? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you all for watching and I wish you all an amazing day. The Emperor Protects.